The thing is, I feel like with other following tutorial videos, it's a little more relaxed. It's a little more like, oh, maybe I have that, maybe I don't. And with this, it's like, bitch, don't die. Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. Today, I'm gonna be following a soap art tutorial and attempting to make my own fancy looking soap. How are we going to do this, you ask? Well, buckle up, because after doing a little bit of research, I kinda sorta know, and I will be attempting to explain it very shortly. Now, for some context, I am a sucker for fancy soap. I love it. I can spend probably a good half an hour circling and smelling those fancy handmade soap displays in Whole Foods or anywhere really. I don't even actually prefer using bar soap to like liquid body wash. I just like looking at it, okay? <gasps> Look at it, look at it, look at it. And don't get me started on soap cutting. I could watch that ish for days. Except when it really seems like they're about to cut their finger, that freaks me out. So the thought crossed my mind one day as I stuck my head into a pile of soap, ostrich style. How hard would it be for me to make my own fancy looking soap? So I searched online for soap art tutorials and found a lot of very satisfying footage and a handful of videos that will actually teach you how to make soap. Now there are a fair amount of like five minute craft type soap hack videos where you can make cool looking individual soaps by basically just melting down previously existing soaps and pouring them into molds. But I want to make a whole loaf of pretty swirly soap from scratch. So thus began my fancy soaping quest. Now before I dive into some of the learnings that I have learned. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Wix for sponsoring this video. Now, some of you old timers might remember Wix as the company through which I designed my very reputable website, Sophia's new intro song.com from the I bought the first five things YouTube recommended me video. Yes, that website is still live. And despite seeing that, they still wanted to partner with us. They're very nice. Now, if you don't know, Wix is an all encompassing tool that helps you build build, design, and host your own website with tons of creative freedom and options for like every skill level. And you can make a lot of different kinds of websites to suit your needs too. So in addition to making music playing, I guess blogs like I did. Will this work? You can also make e-commerce sites, for example. So in the event that I turn out to be like the Beethoven of soap making, I could make my own soap store online and share my creations with the world. Pretty, swirly, smelly creations. Don't hold your breath though. I'll probably end up more like the Beethoven the dog of soap making, but the website will still look good. So if you're in need of a website, consider Wix. The link will be in the description below. Okay, so back to the soap. So I guess the first question we have to ask when making soap from scratch is what is soap even made of? Soap in general is made by combining oils which contain fatty acids with sodium hydroxide lye, which is a base and honestly by itself pretty poisonous. But when you mix those two together, you start a process called saponification, in which the acids of the oils are broken down by the lye into glycerin and fatty acid salts, or these long, spermy-looking molecules. And these little swimmers have a hydrophilic head that is attracted to water and a lipophilic tail that is attracted to oils. So when you use your bar of soap, the lipophilic tails will grab onto the dirt and oils on your skin, and the hydrophilic heads will hang onto the water that rinses it all away. This took me a while to figure out because I haven't taken chemistry since 2008. So basically, in these soap making videos, people will combine like an oil mixture with lye water to make a soap batter. And then they will add colorants and fragrances and use a myriad of different tools and methods to get some pretty looking soap. Unfortunately, although there are a lot of these videos that have very aesthetic footage and do outline their process, not a lot of them are like full-on step-by-step -step tutorials for beginners. 
like me. But thankfully, I stumbled upon this channel called Soap Queen TV, run by this lady, Anne Marie, who seems to be kind of like the godmother of online soap art tutorials, partially because I think she owns her own company called Brambleberry that sells soap making materials that a lot of people seem to use. And on her channel, she details different techniques, what equipment you should use, and how to handle the whole lie is toxic and can kill you. Thing. And after watching a lot of her videos, I came across this tutorial of how to make hanger swirl soap, which for the purposes of this video, checked a lot of boxes for me. It's colorful, it's swirly, and if I saw it at the store, I would definitely sniff it. I love how each of the hanger swirls just pulled up the colors, gorgeous. So I picked this one, and then ordered everything that she used in this tutorial from her website so we could make it. Yes. She got me. Hook, line, and sinker. Now before we begin, I just want to harp on the fact that lye is a pretty dangerous substance, like it can burn your skin, it can get really hot and erupt out of its container, and it can even explode if exposed to the wrong thing. So they say to keep kids and pets away from it, try not to get it on your skin, try not to breathe the fumes in, and definitely don't get it in your eyes or eat it. Anne Marie makes you watch like four videos on lye safety before she even tells you how to make soap, so just know it can be bad. So on that note, let's do this. Okay, so it's a couple of weeks later after ordering all of our supplies, our many supplies, you don't need to pan, it looks like a mess. And I think that we have everything we're going to need now, so we are ready to make our soap. So basically in this tutorial, Anne-Marie makes a soap batter with her oils and lye water and then separates it out into four different containers. From there, she adds like different colorants to each one, pours them into a loaf mold, and then uses like a coated wire to move the colors around inside of the loaf to get that hanger swirl design. So there are like plenty of things we have to do. Yes. A myriad of steps. This is the first time I've ever made soap. And in the beginning of the tutorial, she specifically states that it's an advanced technique. And I'm like, okay. If you've never made soap before. This is an advanced technique. I'm biting off more than I can chew and I know it. So before we really get into it, I just wanna prep my hanger tool for future swirling purposes. So essentially I'm just going to like uncoil it, straighten it out. It's a shitty one. Stay focused here. <laughs> and then bend it into kind of like a U shape. Make sure that your hanger tool is perfectly sized to fit nicely into your mold. Okay, so we're going with this as our hanger tool shape. Looks good to me. So now that that's done, we can like get into the recipe and start getting our hands dirty or not dirty because I'll be wearing gloves. So our first step is to prep the colorants. Now I'm gonna be using the exact same colors as Anne-Marie in the exact same order. I'm just doing everything exactly as Anne-Marie says. I didn't go off the books for anything. That's why we have everything from frickin' Brambleberry.com. It is not sponsored by Brambleberry. It's sponsored by Wix. Get it straight. <laughs> so basically, I'm gonna take sweet almond oil and put one tablespoon into each of these four little cups. Shot glasses? You probably shouldn't take shots of them, but you could describe them as shot glasses. They're Tivana sample cups. Exactly, R.I.P. All right, so we're done with the almond oil. Then take one teaspoon of each of your colorants and place it in those containers on top of the oil. Now, Anne-Marie specifically says that she goes lightest to darkest, like white, yellow, light blue, and dark blue. So that way I don't have to rinse my mixer in between colors. So I'm just going with that mentality. There will be no rinsing in this video. Next, take your mini mixer and gently move that powder around. You don't wanna turn on the mini mixer and then poof, have all that powder just go everywhere. Oh, oh my God. Oh, you better hold it. I have to hold it. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, yeah. it's vibrating my hand. I didn't snitch. Give each of these colorants a good blending. Why is it making that sound? It's plastic on metal, stuff. It sounds like a duck. A oh, bit. a little powder sprayed. <laughs> It'll be okay. This counter's been through a lot. All right, so I've got my pigments and now it's time to measure out our fragrance. I'm using a tried and true fragrance oil from brambleberry.com. This crisp cotton fragrance oil, it smells, well, crisp. <gasps> 
Uh, the crisp cotton fragrance oil smells like a really intense childhood memory of a bubble bath. Really, it smells very refreshing and light. Maybe like L'Oreal Kids on crack. For some reason, I can't stop smelling it though. I think I'm trying to get like all of my curious cat sniffing impulses out of the way. Cause once the lie comes out, we can't inhale it all. Huff now, puff later. All right, so now I set my fragrance oil to the side and now we do some of the dangerous stuff, like combining the lye flakes with the water. Welcome to the danger zone. So to make our lye water, we need 10 ounces of distilled water. And once we've measured that out, it's time to bring out the lye. Now I'm going to suit up for safety. So I'm just gonna put my hair up really quick and then also put on my goggles and my gloves just to protect myself from most angles. You're also gonna put that fiends by side off sleeve down too, right? Eh? Eh? One of the only things in this video not bought on brambleberry.com. <laughs> Okay, so now that I'm suited up for safety, I'm also gonna mention that I am in a well-ventilated area with no kids and no pets. Krusty is not here. He will have no part in the soap making process. In fact, he doesn't like soap. He's against it in every way, shape, and form. So let's open our sodium hydroxide lye, which has been sent to us in this sort of like dangerous orange bag. It looks like it's a house being fumigated. <laughs> it's like, don't open me, unless you wanna make a nice fun craft in which case do open me. <laughs> All right, goodbye hazmat suit. And then I need 4.6 ounces, okay? Do it. Trying not to breathe in. So after measuring out the lye, I'm gonna stir it into our distilled water with a stainless steel spoon, not an aluminum spoon. That will explode. And the chemical reaction between the lye and the water is gonna make it pretty hot in her. All right, so it's right now at about 188 degrees Fahrenheit and we want it to be about 120 degrees. I'm gonna put it to the side right now and then we're gonna prepare our oil. So for our oil, we got this quick mix bag that Anne Marie recommended. It contains a mixture of slow moving oils to ensure that I have plenty of time to work on my design. And it came in a bag of 33 ounces and we need 33 ounces. So we're using it all. This is my spaghetti. In general, for soap making, you wanna have your lye water and your oils be about the same temperature. For this recipe in particular, Anne Marie recommends that they should both be around 120 degrees Fahrenheit when you mix them. So basically, I'm just gonna put our oils in the microwave while our lye is cooling down so the two can become 120 degrees at the same time. Boom. So this step is kind of just about waiting. I feel like there's been so much going on that I haven't really gotten to geek out about the laser thermometer that I got on Amazon. I was very confused when I first saw Anne Marie using this because I thought there was like a needle poking out the top that she was sticking into the liquids, but no. It's a freaking laser. It's a freaking laser. All right, our lye water is at about 124 degrees and our oils are at about 120 degrees. So now it's time to combine them. Carefully mix the lye water into the oils by gently pouring down the shaft of your stick blender and pulsing the stick blender off and on. All right, so this is my stick blender and basically I'm gonna put it into my quick mix oils at an angle. I think this is called burping it to make sure that there's no air bubbles underneath there. Make sure that you burped your stick blender. And so now I'm going to pour in my lye water whilst pulsing my stick blender. All right, so that's all my lye water. Now I get to just mix it. Continue stick blending until you've reached just the very, very thinnest of trace. So one term that you hear all the time with soap making is this thing called trace, which basically means that your oils and water have emulsified, or in other words, you can't see any like streaks in your mixture, and it's not gonna separate back out into water and oil. And people say things like light trace, medium trace, and thick trace to indicate like how long you should blend and how thick your batter should be. Is that trace? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Do for like 20 more seconds or 10 All more right. seconds. So light trace should be pretty liquidy and pourable, but it still has to be fully mixed. You think oh, that's, that's trace? That's definitely trace, it's cake batter. All right, so now I'm going to remove my stick blender and then put this, my goggles are foggy. <laughs> Hello. Now, split this batch into four different containers. All right, as I'm pouring it out, my mixture is looking a little thick, but I'm just gonna go with it and put it in my containers anyway. So now what we have to do is add our pigments to each little little guy. Mix in the colorants completely. I'm gonna do the teensiest of stick blends here. Okay, Ready? Let's do this. Uh-oh. Mm? Teensy? Oh no. Tyler, this looks bad. Yeah. This does not look like hers. 
Okay, so what happens, uh? Okay, so we messed up a little bit. Things didn't really go as planned here. I think I overmixed the soap batter a lot. So what I thought was like a thin trace turns out to have been pretty much a thick trace, as in like it's not liquid anymore. And from everything I've read, once you've like mixed and thickened up the soap, you can't really go backwards and thin it out again. So because I went past the thinnest of trace, it's not really pourable anymore. So we can't make any art. This is a fail. We're gonna have to do this again. Unfortunately, that means we're gonna have to reorder everything, wait for it to arrive, and then regroup. Okay, so we are back with more ingredients, ready to go at this soap again. We're trying it a second time to see if we can get past the like combining step. So I'm basically just gonna like speed through all of the steps and then we will resume kind of like figuring it out where we left off, right when we're sort of like mixing the lye water and the oils together. Like right now, I have my oil sort of heated up and I have my lye water like ready to be combined with the oil. There's no question that last time we over blended it, but after watching a few other videos about, you know, trace and general like swirling thingies, in order to get a light trace, I think that we should mix it for like less than 60 seconds versus like the few minutes we gave it last time. So we're just gonna blend it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour down the stick and then once it's in, I will pulse. Oh yeah. It needs to be fully mixed like with no streaks of oil or anything. But that's it, then it's done. Yeah, all right, I'll, I'll, let's go with that. That's light as a trace. It doesn't look like Anne Marie's, but last time it didn't look like Anne Marie's either. I guess that doesn't mean anything. All right, bring in the dancing lobsters. So now I'm gonna once again attempt to pour the mixture into my containers. Oh yeah, that's pouring though, Sa. It's better than last time, for sure. All right, now color. Time for color. I feel like I have to go fast this time because besides the overmixing last time, I think the longer I waited to pour, the harder it got. See, I guess this is why Anne Marie doesn't rinse anything because she doesn't have time. What does Anne Marie say to the God of Death? Ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah. Because the soap is a hardening. Now we do one stick blend in each container, lightest to darkest. No matter what happens this time, this consistency is definitely less stiff than last time. Like it's pretty liquid still, which I think is a good sign. All right. and now. Now we're gonna hand mix the fragrance oil in. There's a little bit for each. I'm mixing the fragrances in with a whisk for the first three colors so the trace doesn't like become thicker. But for the dark blue container, I'm gonna hit it with the stick blender again. That's because this is my very first layer in my soap and I want it to be nice and thick. I think because we don't want any of the other colors to like pierce through the blue. Now I'm gonna take my loaf mold out and pour the entirety of the dark blue soap into the loaf mold. That looks pretty good. I'm just glad it's pouring. And then give this mold a little tap on the counter to eliminate air bubbles. All right, now let's jiggle this bitch. How much do you think I'm supposed to jiggle? Is this enough? I think you're good. So now that the dark blue's in, Anne Marie's next step is to spoon in the white soap. Half of it. Half of it, there you go, someone remembers. That's why I'm here. And just slow and easy does it. You don't wanna get any breakthrough. It's kind of making me think the last time we messed it up a 10 out of 10, because it feels like we haven't done this perfectly and it's like kind of looking okay. Listen, this is my first loaf. You're doing great. Yeah, you're like Kim Kardashian stuff. You're doing great, sweetie. So if I'm Kim, that makes you Chris. Well, I'm Chris Jenner. Damn I'll it. take that all day, yeah. I wanted to be Chris. Who doesn't want to be Chris? Now add most of the light blue onto the top of that white. My light blue is kind of stuck a little bit like right on top but down below but down below it's pretty soft still okay. so let's pour this while it's still good yeah i was coming out soft this is no longer liquid nevertheless i'm gonna flatten that down with my little spatula give it a little jiggle and move on to the white use all the rest of that white soap yeah my white is looking pretty chunky but i refuse to take an l on this i've come too far to turn back now Finally, add all the yellow soap to the top of the white. You may notice that your soap is getting a little thick. If that's the case, just give it a quick mix to get it back to loose and flowing. I'm not sure we're gonna get this back to loose and flowy, but we can probably get it out. Here we go, here we oh, go. it's coming, it's coming. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get a spoon. I can't see a thing. There's so much yellow. There is a lot of yellow in here. What is this? A Coldplay song? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, I think that's all of the yellow. Wow, my goggles are like, I literally can't see out of my left eye. You've been sweating. <laughs> <laughs> sweating out of my eyeballs. Whoa. <laughs> it's a whole new world out here. And now it's time to use 
our hanger tool. Basically what I do is I use my hanger tool that we a very long time ago measured out to this loaf. Then I'm going to insert it and then kind of like do like this kind of motion where I like go up and down and back and forth to um, swirl it basically. One thing I will say is that it's kind of hard to see what Anne Marie is doing here because it's all happening inside of the loaf. A Little bit on the bottom, up, but don't break through the top. Down and over and up and over. Which makes me kind of nervous. But at this point, there's soap in there and we're just gonna go with it. So whatever happens now is just gonna happen. You're doing it's something. It's feeling thick to me, guys. It does not feel like it's swirling well. Hey, it's all good. I don't know. Did something happen? <laughs> What was going on in there? It feels thick in there. Yeah? I don't know if what we got was a desirable result. But you, you're probably dragging things around. Yeah, something happened. I guess we'll see. Finally, remember that blue that we reserved? Just take a little bit and drizzle it down the middle. My light blue is pretty thick at this point, but I'm just gonna try and like glob some on. And then I'm gonna take a little skewer and try and make a swirly design on top of my loaf like Anne Marie does. The yellow is so chunky on top, you guys. <laughs> Actually, it looks like a more intricate design. It's kind of like, hey, look at this. Is that a rose? Is this like Baroque? You know, is that a Rococo piano? All right. So with that design on top, this is what I'm going to be calling my soap loaf. I have no idea how it's going to come out. The hanger tool felt like it was sort of going through custard, which I'm not sure is ideal. But from here, I can't tell how it looks inside. So my final step right now is to spray the top of our loaf with some rubbing alcohol. And put the soap to bed. And then I'm going to leave our soap to like dry out on a heating pad and underneath a box to ensure gel phase, which basically means we're gonna try and keep it hot as it sets. So the colors will end up being more vibrant. And then in a couple of days, we will cut our soap mold and see what it looks like. All right. So we are here 48 hours after putting our soap into the loaf mold and it is now time to take it out and cut it. Ooh. And there is the soap. So to take the soap out of the mold, I'm pretty sure I just have to like tug on these sides and then flip it over. Here we go. Oh, we're out. It's coming. Yeah. Ta-da. Well, it is sort of all over my hands, but it's out. All right. That looks pretty good. It looks artistic, sort of. The stripes on the sides leave a little something to be desired. I'm not sure that the layers were very even. I was spooning them in mostly, so that might be the culprit. But I will say that the colors are looking pretty good. The sides are very smooth to the touch. And I am smelling like an overwhelming odor of crisp cotton fragrance. I did spill it all over the kitchen basically also, so that might be why. All observations of the outside of the loaf aside Side, though, I think like the true test of my soap making abilities prowess is how this thing looks on the inside. So I'm gonna get a knife and we'll just chop this thing open. Ooh. Is it nice and firm? Ooh, no, actually it's kind of soft and nice. Kind of like a block of cheese. It's kind of stuck at the bottom. <laughs> oh, 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 it's lifting up the loaf. Here we go. Ooh, all right, anything? Oh, okay. I think I'm starting to see something that could be a swirl. There is a hole right there, but it's almost like a, um, a wave pattern. All right, I'm going back in for more. Oh, 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 see, I keep lifting up the loaf with every slice. Ooh, there's some pattern in there. That's something. It looks better than I expected based on how it was feeling. When I was swirling, it didn't feel right, but it looks like half right. I think we should just like leave it at Whole Foods and see if people pick it up. There is a giant giant hair of mine right there. Oh, so we're not gonna leave it at Whole Foods. Yeah, thankfully the hair is not like imbued into the soap. It just was laying on top of it, but it was there. As I continue to chop, I think that some of the bars have like a pretty decent looking design. Some of them do have like that ocean wave pattern, whereas other ones get a little closer to like the actual hanger swirl we're going for. Yeah, where it goes up and down. Yeah, exactly, where it goes up and down. I think for some reason I was much better at going up and I don't know why. So now that all of our bars have been cut. Basically what we do is we just have to leave it somewhere kind of like cool and dry for a few weeks to cure, just so all of the water evaporates out and leaves you with firm bars of soap. But for our purposes, the soap art is done. So this is pretty much what they're gonna look like. Okay, so that was me attempting to follow a soap art tutorial. In the end, we made 12 bars of soap that look okay. I think I'm missing a little bit of a uniform 
uniformity to my swirl. And I also have a few texture issues with my soap, like holes. Maybe because our soap batter was getting pretty chunky by the time we put the last few layers into the loaf. So they don't look quite as nice as Anne Marie's. She's the soap queen though. She is the soap queen. And I guess at this point, I am the soap peasant. Besides all that, I do like the top of my soap, maybe even more than Anne Marie's. Our top is more like textured, sort of like, you know, foam on top of a sea. Sea foam is what I meant to say. And that kind of matches our like wave motif. So maybe there was a silver lining to the chonk. In terms of what went wrong to cause the chonk though, I think I underestimated how fast I had to move in like the pouring section to keep all of my soap liquid. Even though we did do a better job with the level of trace to begin with, I think that I spent a little too much time narrating the steps. And while I was chatting, the soap was congealing. The only other thing I found really difficult to figure out was the hanger swirl technique. I think because I can't really see what Anne Marie is doing, and I also can't really see what I'm doing, it's sort of a crapshoot. Especially because I don't have a lot of experience working with the loaf mold. Obstacles aside, I did enjoy making this soap a lot, and I would definitely be interested in making more soap now that I have some of the basics down. In fact, because we had some extra ingredients, I did try this technique a couple more times, and I think I've improved on the pouring a lot, but not so much on the swirling. One time I messed it up like really bad, and the next time I did better, but ended up kind of low for some reason, so the swirls are on the bottom for most of the bar. And after re-watching this a few times, down and over and up and over over and then up and still not getting it i'm quite confused sorry Anne marie i'm just a lowly soap peasant thank you guys so much for watching and once again a huge thank you to wix for sponsoring this video i hope there is someone out there who is actually good at soap making who could use wix to make their own store i would like to buy your soap please it's okay if you're not good at making soap though you can still have your own wix website i mean i have one so there you go. If you liked that video, make sure to shamash that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to shamash that subscribe button. Here are my social media handles and a big shout out to Red for watching. Thanks for watching, Red. And I will see you guys a next time.